All right, guys, um, welcome to Momentum Academy's Pre-AP Bio Open House. Um, my name is Ms. Mathur, and I would be the one who would be taking the classes this summer. The objective of today's uh, meeting is to tell you a little bit about myself and, of course, the classes and how the objective would be and how the classes will be conducted. So guys, one of the first things, a little bit about myself, I am, um, I have about 18 years of teaching experience and I've taught in multiple schools. I have a master's in education and biochemistry. Um, currently, I'm teaching pre-AP biochemistry and AP biology. And currently I'm at um, St. John's School, which is a private school in Houston. So a little bit, guys, going from there, uh, let's jump right into the summer course. So these are the 2023 summer online camps, and this is one of the camps that I will be conducting. I have worked with Momentum Academy for a year now, and I'm currently also taking some other classes that are with pre-AP Bio and AP Bio, and these are during the year that they, these classes are conducted. This is an honors biology course, and the dates are right here, June 19th to August 21st, and the timing is 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, these are the times when there are no classes, but guys, that's the duration that we are doing. We will be meeting twice a week, and each session will be about two hours. So the class description, mainly what pre-AP bio is, we are giving a good foundation for incoming freshmen. And the course will be designated more at the honors level. And so we are talking about critically thinking about our living world. And guys, the students will talk a little bit about scientific reasoning apart from actually knowing the content or the topics that we have to cover. Um, in the next few slides, I will go over what are the main topics that we will be covering and the syllabus and the sequence that we will go over it. So recommended grades are definitely 8th to 11th, and you should have completed middle school science, and it's a lecture-based class only. Okay, so when we talk about pre-AP bio, pre-AP has a very specific requirements. And guys here, the topics that we cover are scientific skills, which is we start the year with scientific method, where we go over different variables and what affects um, uh, an experiment. And this is something that we cover in all the topics. So that's kind of like the big idea that we cover throughout. Then topic-wise, we go into ecology, biochemistry, cellular processes, genetics, evolution, classification, um, and then we end the year with plant and human body system. But that's a year-long course. The summer will include topics that will cover the first semester of a regular pre-AP bio um, topics. And these will mainly include scientific method, biochemistry, cell structure, function, cell energy, cell reproduction, genetics, and molecular biology. This, guys, this is definitely a very content-specific, fast-paced uh, class that we, um, that we conduct during the summer. The objective is for the students to get an idea of what they are getting. You know, when school starts, it's really, it goes so fast that kids, especially coming from that middle school transition to high school is hard. One of the main things is, you know, organization, learning that concept and then giving quick assessments. So it's always advantageous if you have been exposed or if you have learned that topic ahead of time, that definitely gives you a leg up over someone who hasn't done it. And so that's the objective of the course. Guys, this is where the units that we will be covering. So pre-AP Bio in the whole year covers about 14 units, and we will be covering seven of them uh, during the summer. And we'll start with scientific method, graphing, where they learn about the scientific method, the different variables, how to identify them, how to read a graph, which is a basic skill that is required by the curriculum. Then we go into the content, and guys, we'll start with biochemistry. So we have to introduce introduce a little bit of chemistry before we go into the biological world. And then we'll go to cell structure where 
once we know the chemistry, we go into the biological domain and we'll go into cell structure. How do cells look like? What is their functionality and so on? Um, then guys, we go into what's called cell energy, where we see how living organisms get energy through the idea of cellular respiration, photosynthesis and enzyme. This is a very important component of pre-AP biology. Um, after we go into cell structure, function, energy, we go to cell reproduction, where they study two different types of regulatory me uh, division methods, which are mitosis and meiosis, and then our most popular unit on genetics, and we'll end with molecular biology and biotechnology. So that's kind of the sequence and the units that we are planning to cover during the summer. Here is a more detailed syllabus. It tells you uh, class by class what we will be covering. So the way that I usually go with our, my classes is the first day, of course, is more like introduction. Uh, we cover content easily for about one hour, one hour, 15 minutes. And then we do tons of practice also. The practice is where the students will get classwork. I'll give them 10, 15 minutes. They'll do the work and then I'll call on students to discuss certain answers. If someone missed something, I go back and clarify it. So we also do practice. And then after doing this practice in class, I also assign uh, other practice sheets that they have to do. There will be a small multiple choice quiz after every class that they can also do for um for our for the class preparation, which is on Canvas, which is the platform that we use. But so you can see that we start with introduction to scientific method and graphing, but then I also go to intro to biomolecules where we are talking about hydrolysis, dehydration, and then we complete biomolecules and we go to cells. And so you can see that within each class, we cover multiple units because there's just too much material to cover in this short amount of time. And then after the first two classes, when I have done two units, they will have an in-class quiz on biomolecules and scientific method, which is about 30 minutes. This is usually a multiple choice um, canvas-based assessment, and they will get prompt feedback. And that also gives an idea so I can see which one they missed so the next time when we meet, I usually start with a review where I ask like why you miss something, what is the concept that they're missing, so I can uh, fill in those gaps that the kids are, they don't have those. And so this guys tells you week by week what we will be covering. And like I said, it's um, in, in these are the topics the first week that we are covering. So it's a pretty fast paced curriculum. So what should a student do to be successful and for this you know, course to be helpful during the year? Guys, definitely please keep, take detailed notes. The good thing is you would also be able to access the class recordings. So definitely you can go back and check what you missed, but taking detailed notes, making sure you review would be one of the main things that will help you be more successful. Um, in pre-AP bio, I definitely uh, think that one of the basic things that you are missing uh, or the most challenge that you have is the amount of content, the concepts and the pace. That is the main challenge. Um, make sure you have writing tools. You will be taking notes. Um, and guys, then if you need more in-depth knowledge, I will, of course, introduce. This is the book that a lot of schools use. It's called Campbell Biology. You can definitely buy a secondhand version over Amazon. And what I usually do is on my Canvas pages, I will upload the sections in the textbook that I'm covering. That way it'll be easier for you to map it. And so if you want to read on your own and get a more in-depth knowledge, then you can also do that on your own. I would definitely say if you have time to do it, because it gives you, not only gives you the practice on reading a textbook with some dense material, but also to get more in-depth information and knowledge about the topic. We do class discussions where I ask 
questions, I do expect you to take a active part because guys, this is what gives me the feedback on what I need to review or where there could be a gap. And of course, please ask questions after every topic, I give you time. We have kind of like a practice mode where they do it. And if they don't get that answer, that is my clue to kind of clarify that topic. So that's kind of where we are going. Let me see, guys, which edition of Campbell Biology would you recommend? Guys, this is what I would say. Campbell Biology right now is at the ninth edition. This is the most recent one. They're coming up with 10th. I don't think that there is any difference from 8 to 10th, uh, 8 to 9. Um, the thing is, Campbell Biology brings this new edition every year, and they will add a few kind of like figures change a little bit, but the, but the content kind of remains the same. So I don't think there would be any difference. Please bring, uh, I would recommend to take, to buy even the eighth edition. Now before that, yes, things have changed. So eighth edition, I would definitely say, if you can see a used version, go with that eighth and ninth doesn't have a big difference. But guys, reading will for sure help you. And it also, you know, it's summer. So hopefully you have time to do that. Okay. So guys, that's what the gist of the classes would be. Any questions till now? All right. So guys, let's take a look at one such topic just to give you, I'll do give a little quick lesson on something that I cover so that you have an idea how the class will proceed. So like I said, it's a two hour curriculum. And so we um, start by reviewing the previous material. It's usually I'll call on students or I'll tell them, hey, type down the answers in the chat so I know that everyone knows what they are talking about. But guys, one of the things that we talk, that we teach is biochemistry, which is usually where a lot of kids struggle because it has tons of chemistry. And more importantly, it's a pretty abstract topic. And so students tend to struggle a little bit on it. It also helps if you know of it ahead of time. A lot of middle schools do chemistry, but some don't, not to the level that's required. And so this is definitely one of the ones where students challenge. Right, so let me give you a brief kind of a lesson of how your kids can expect the class would go. Guys, I have the slides that I will upload on class pages, so they are available to you. The notes are there, but they are not as detailed. It's the explanation part that I'll do in class that will help you understand the topic in its entirety. So let's say we are talking about biochemistry and guys, this is our second unit to um, write down the main things. I use this uh, really cute whiteboard. That is where I usually write down the notes and I do expect the students to write them down as I am going. Um, tend to go a little faster, but again, I always tell them to let me know if I am going fast so I can slow down or repeat something. So these are what my slides will look like, guys, we're talking about matter and how it's recycled. So before we start biology, we have to talk about a little bit about chemistry, because guys, at the basis of biology is chemistry. And so that's where we start this idea of biochemistry. Usually, this is when I'll ask students, do you have any background in chemistry? That gives me an idea on how in-depth or how fast I can go at a particular topic. Okay, so once I talk about a little bit about them, then we start talking about these different molecules. Guys, another thing that you would see is just seeing these molecules is really, really um, important. So they might have seen it, but here is where I'll introduce. Let's say we take carbon dioxide and CO2 looks something like this. It is a chemical molecule. It does have um, these elements, carbon and oxygen. But then my first question would be, why are they arranged in this way? What is going on? Why is carbon attached to these two oxygens? What's the purpose behind it? Or I will start with, where have you seen this molecule? So a lot of time, quickly, it's like, 
oh, this is in the atmosphere, this is something that we breathe out, that starts the whole process of well. That means the biological uh, organisms are using chemistry. I also give them an idea. They might have heard about glucose, but looking at it visually gives them an idea. So this is where I go over, this is what a glucose looks like. Which elements do you see? So there's usually like carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. That's glucose. This is NaCl. Um, my question would be, well, where do you know this? And so this is your regular table salt. But that's kind of how I start a process, just for them to see what is the relevance, because the relevance is important. So why do we study chemistry? Because it does overlap with the biological aspect. And guys, this is how we I kind of go over and show where we are going. So our main purpose over here is we got to talk about atoms, molecules and compounds. Again, before we start a topic, I like to assess if the students or how much the students know. So usually I ask, have you heard about these um, uh, concepts and what do you know about them? That gives me an idea how much in depth I have to go into. I also start by telling them what is the objective of this unit, just so that the students have an idea what are they expected to know? And that also gives me an idea because the next time when we meet, I will follow those objectives to see whether they understood it or not. And so we start with atoms and guys, the definition is of course, it's the smallest unit of an element or let's say smallest unit of matter that is called as an atom with properties of that element. Um, uh, then we go over the structure of an atom, nucleus, protons, neutrons, giving them an actual picture helps. A lot of time students have known about this because they did a little bit of chemistry in eighth grade. If not, we need to clarify them. So usually I can go pretty quickly, but then we talk about these important vocab words like atomic number and atomic mass. So we are kind of building up on things that they have already done in chemistry but then once I have have that information, then I can build up upon that. So guys, chem, uh, atomic number, atomic mass, then we go into electrons, what are those, protons, what are those, and how does it determine the property of an element? Because ultimately, we are going to go into molecules and compounds, and that's where we are going into, like how or why are these elements combining together to make molecules. So we talk about a little bit about valence electrons and how these electrons are important in determining the properties of an element. Going over the periodic table where this is the practical aspect. Again, I have to, most of the time, some kids know, but guys, this idea of valence and how that's important. So first defining it, outermost orbit, but what does that mean? Giving them an idea, talking to them about, well, if you have lithium and it has only three electrons, then how are they arranged? They are arranged in the first one and two, the electronic configuration is two and one, sorry, where two electrons go in the first orbit and then the outermost is one. So this is where we go into the valence electrons. Once we talk about the valence electrons and I know the students have an idea, by the way, guys, this is where we'll stop and I will give them a little worksheet, quick worksheet where I'll do some practice questions together and then I'll give them a worksheet. We'll have usually a 10, 15 minute that I'll give them to complete it and then we'll go over. Guys, it also helps because at this point I have been lecturing for about 45 minutes and that's what I've seen is kind of like a point where I have to give them a break. So they've been taking a lot of notes. So we take a quick break where they do, it's not a break break, but they're actually working on a worksheet, 10, 15 minutes five minutes, I go over the answers. If anything is missing, then I will clarify that and we will move on. So here is where that break will come in and then I'll go over, well, now that you know about valence electron, we talk about these lowest dot structures where we show 
how to make these valence electrons. This is where a lot of students might not know. And so I have to spend a little bit of time because I'm making the foundation for the kiddos to move forward. From Lewis dot structures, guys, again, like I said, I will give some practice. So this is what the practice will look like. What does the Lewis dot structure for oxygen? And these are quick assessments while we are studying. Now you tell me what that would be. And once they do it, then I show them what does Lewis for sodium looks like, hydrogen, lithium and so on. So now then once I know that they know the topic, I come to the main question. What is similar? What is different? How is it relevant? So you kind of build up on the foundational concept to then go to the next step. And once we have discussed that, we will go on to the next idea of how we use them in biochemistry. So guys, that was kind of where we go with this whole idea. Um, we talk about ions and then I'm kind of, I keep building up on that where we talk about how ions are when electrons are gained or lost. And this is based on all valence electrons. And that's where we talk about how these ionic bonds are keeping it together. And then I go into the idea of molecules. And that's when we talk about these different molecules, NaCl. At this point, once I, they understand that, that is when I'll tie it to the original diagram that I showed them and they definitely have a better idea. And of course, we'll go over the properties of why they are there and then we'll go into, well, why are these elements um, essential? So if you see from what I'm trying to show is we build up on concepts. A lot of these concepts, not a lot, some of these concepts kids know ahead, but they have a very basic foundation. What my work is to add on so that they can then have a complete understanding of this topic. But this is just, you know, a quick lesson on how my lessons would go and how we would go. And again, guys, um, let me show you one more thing. Give me just a minute. I also wanted to show you what my course pages will look like. So give me just a minute and I can share that also so that you can also see what it's going to look like so this is what my um and it's uh, the page is loading yeah now you can see so this is what it looks like at my end and guys this canvas is our main thing that we are using and for week one week two you have under handouts, the PDF version of the notes that I'll use. This is the analyzing, interpreting data that the practice that they will do in class. They will always have a quiz and then you will have class recordings. We will do in-class practice. Um, apart from that, I'll also leave... Um, I'll also give you more information on more practice sheets. Uh, where it says handout, I usually write down specific topics as well as the sections in the textbook that you should be covering if you do want to get more information about that topic. So that's just something that I wanted to show about the curriculum, about what the Canvas page looks like. Um, Guys, that is at my end. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, I understand that you share the textbook you're going to use and materials you are very organized. Uh, just wondering, you know, for these high schools, what they use at a school, is that um, consistent with the textbook or are they using different material? No, they will be using the same textbook. I teach at a current uh, school and it's not even Texas, but across the board, ninth grade pre-AP is a standardized curriculum. Yes, I would definitely say in some um, uh, schools, the sequence might change, but ultimately they will all teach the same thing. So the textbook will coincide with that. Um, Lily, did I answer your question? Um, yeah, just, um, what I heard is different high schools, 
you know, apparently they have um, teachers, you know, set in different levels, right? Some high schools is really hard. Some mm -hmm. high schools probably a little bit easier. You know, that's my question. I say, so will you different differentiate from school to school or is, are you just like covering for the basic, I mean, pre-AP level? Yes, so I am teaching at the honors level. You're absolutely right. Some schools do it at a harder level, some, some easier. I am going more at the hardest level, I guess, just so that the kids can know the most rigor during the year. Um, as far as the sequence of topics, this is my 18th year teaching and I these are the topics that I deliberately chose, which are first most challenging. Like even if they're doing it in the second semester, they this is where the kids face the most challenge. Secondly, this is across the board. I would say 90% of the time, the, kid, the teachers um, cover these topics. Um, I can definitely say for Texas, but if you guys are out of Texas, I would also be okay. You know, what I can do is I can upload the topics. I might not be able to cover it, but I can give you resources that you can, if you want later, you can do it at your own end. Um, all right, guys, let's see what else you only teach first part of the book. No, guys, I do teach, but because of the summer way that we are doing, the summer will cover only the first semester. That's enough time during the year. I teach both. Uh, we have a fall and a spring um, uh, where I cover the whole year, but the summer course is mainly to get you a head start on the first semester only. Ultimately, when I do it during the year, I cover all of the whole book. Uh, what would be your top advice for studying biology, given it's so um, content heavy and requires a lot of mass, mass memorizing? Guys, absolutely right. Like I said, yes, the challenge with biology is the content and so much content. And I think that's why summers are perfect. You know, we shouldn't waste that. And it does give a kids like, I'll tell you guys, this is my uh, 18th year teaching, but I have been tutoring for a long time. And all the kids who have taken a course during the summer, they definitely do much better than the ones who are just coming because not only the content, but this transition from middle to high school is very, very different. You know, the way, the pace, everything is different about it. So knowing it ahead, even if you had put that effort in, it pays off. So the only thing I would say is that please make sure that you use this time and it will definitely pay off. Uh, you teach at St. John's? Yes, sir. I um, Guys, I do teach at St. John's currently, and this is my fifth year at St. John's. Um, guys, any other questions? Is there any element of your teaching that you are particularly proud of? Yes, yes, I am. So one of the things that experience teaches you is how to approach a subject so that it's understandable to all different types of students, right? Students are different learners. And so in my um, teaching, I am teaching something, I'm keeping them for two hours. I have to make sure that I makes it interactive, right? If I was face-to-face, -face, that's different. In virtual, it becomes more um, harder. I have to say COVID actually taught us those techniques on how to interact with our kids in a way that it's still active and I know that they are learning. So yes, one of the teachings is I can't teach for long. I put these, I call them like mini breaks or brain breaks where I give them a little time to assimilate the information. It's usually a practice or it's usually something that will hook them, an interesting fact about it. And that's what I have heard, especially for you know the ninth grade part. When I teach upper levels, when I teach seniors, juniors, AP bio, that's different. I can go all the way without a break. But with my freshmen, I call them my little babies. I have to be a little bit more conscious of them um, not taking them all the way. So yes, 
for visual learners. I have different types. One of the things that I'm trying to incorporate is maybe putting more educational videos that they can see. So I'll see how that goes. It depends on my population that I end up teaching. Uh, but one thing that I can change is the amount of content that I have to do. But I have to find ways of making it more fun for them. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Um, anything else? Guys, having the recording definitely helps. You can go back. I'm not sure for how long you can access it, but I know Momentum Academy does give you access to the recordings for a long time. And these practice sheets help. So they are really, really useful to you. Um, guys, if you have any other questions, please make sure you can email us at Momentum Academy. I will be, um, they usually forward the emails to me and I would be able to answer them quickly, whatever your, um, anything that you, you know, comes to your mind later on. Guys, it was really nice talking to you. Hopefully I gave you all enough information and I hope to see you all over the summer. Um, thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. Bye.